everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 19, so I'm going to be talking about the books that TikTok made me read this year. <laughs> what was originally supposed to be Bookmas Day 19 and then immediately that day I had this idea and I was like no I actually do have like a really solid list of books here so I need to pivot and do this one instead. So the video that I originally filmed for today will be coming for the last week of Bookmas. It kind of makes more sense there anyways but essentially I wanted to take a day to talk about books that I was influenced to read. I don't know like if I would have gotten to these as quickly or if I ever would have gotten to to some of them without the influence of specifically TikTok, but also they've kind of been hyped up in like various places as well. So not strictly like TikTok or BookTok, but definitely that has played a role in like a lot of the recommendations that I have gotten, especially this year more than other years. Like usually I feel like there's a few different recommendations that I will take, but I feel like this year there are a lot of books that I don't think I normally would have read and I went on on a limb and tried them and I ended up finding some that I really enjoyed. Like definitely not all of them were hits, but I thought it was interesting to kind of look back on the books that they definitely did get me and I had to read them because I was just seeing them everywhere. This video actually pairs really nicely with Bookmas Day 11 where I was talking about the most hyped books of 2022. So I asked you guys what books you heard about constantly and compiled it into a nice list. So I'll link that down below for you guys if you want to check it out, but don't worry. It's not going to be a repeat of that video at all. There definitely are some books like on here that were in that video, but I'm going to be talking about my thoughts for these ones this time and there's also some that like I particularly saw in a TikTok or was hearing about a lot and they weren't even like that necessarily hyped up. I'm just gonna get into the list. None of this preamble matters. Let's just get to it. But actually, before we do, don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you will be notified whenever I post. I'm going to be posting a new video every single day for the entire month of December, so you don't want to miss any of that. And without further ado, let's actually get into the list. I wanted to actually start out with one that I don't own anymore because I got rid of my copy, which is not a great sign, but that is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armez. I hadn't heard of this book before and then when I did Bookmas 2021 and I did that video about the most hyped books, so many of you guys were like talking about this book and that was one of the most mentioned ones and I was like weird because I've never heard of it, never seen it anywhere. But of course after that I had to pick myself up a copy to see what everyone was talking about and also like it's an adult romance, it's a fake dating thing, it just sounded exactly like what I would love. But I did not like this one. I didn't really care for the writing all that much. I felt like the writing was just kind of like, it was so long and it absolutely did not need to be like anywhere near as long as what it was. So yeah, it just, it wasn't my thing, but this definitely has been a super, super hyped up book. And for me, I don't necessarily think that it was worth the hype or it lived up to it, but I can understand like if it is kind of your first like fake dating enemies to lovers story, why you would really enjoy it, but it wasn't mine. I've read quite a few of those. So that's why it was just kind of an okay read for me. I didn't like hate it, but I don't think I will read other things by the author, but like I'm not gonna say never, like never say never, but I just don't think so. Next is actually another romance read, but the nice thing, like TikTok definitely does really love romances, but this list is definitely not all romances. There's actually something from like a ton of different genres. But for the next romance, it is How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. I was thinking about doing different videos with like TikTok hyped reads and doing different reading vlogs and stuff. So that actually led to me picking up a lot of hyped up books. And this was one of them that I picked up because of that video although it had been kind of on my radar, like I had been interested in this one, I just didn't end up picking it up. And this is kind of an interesting romance story because I don't think it like particularly follows any tropes. It does 
have like a list involved in the romance, so that is a trope, but it's not like friends to lovers or enemies to lovers. I guess in a way, it's kind of forbidden romance, but not really. So I kind of liked the fact that it didn't follow any tropes necessarily, and I really enjoyed the characters as well. And I do have more by this author because it definitely did like pique my interest. I thought this was a really solid romance, and I do like, I don't think it was a bad one, but I don't think it was mind blowing. So I'm kind of curious why this one is so hyped up. Like why does TikTok latch onto the books that it does? I can't explain it. I don't know why, but this has definitely been one of them. And I would be curious to see exactly why, because I think it was, it was a good read. Like it was a good romance book. I would give it like a solid, like four out of five stars if I did ratings, but I'm just like, why is it so hyped up? You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm gonna come off of this tangent now. Actually kind of a nice bookend to the book that I was last talking about is this next one. Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ayamide. Now I say that because this one I totally understand why it is so hyped up because it's the kind of book that when you finish it you want to talk about it. You want to talk to other people about it. You want other people to have read it because you're trying to wrap your mind around what just happened. You're like absolutely what is going on and that was exactly the case with this book. It blew my mind and I just wanted to scream to the high heavens about it and talk to everyone about it and try and like suss out exactly what had just happened and what I had just read, but like in the best way possible. It is such an interesting story. It is like a dark academia mystery story, but it's dealing with racial relations and everything and racism. And it is so incredibly well done. Like the fact that this is a debut completely blows my mind. And I think that this book lives up to like all of the hype that it's getting. I completely understand it. Next is You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. This is another one I really liked. I am like pleasantly surprised by the fact that I enjoy most of the books that TikTok recommends to me. And I'm not saying that like I think it's going to be bad recommendations. That sounds really bad. I'm just like I'm really really liking them more than I'm expecting to. I'm kind of going out on a whim with a lot of them and I end up really loving them. But this one I didn't really go out on a whim. I knew that I would want to read this one and once again an incredible debut. Cannot believe it's a debut. Such an emotional story but like so beautiful and great. So this is about a girl whose boyfriend dies and she is like having trouble mourning him. She's definitely, it depicts grief in a really interesting raw and honest way and that's not always pretty obviously like 99% of the time it's not pretty but she ends up calling her boyfriend because she wants to hear his voice one last time and is surprised when he picks up and they actually have like this limited connection so it's a really sad story about grief about goodbyes character development all of that and I think this is a really great one to continue to hype up I think it definitely lived up to it for me of course if I'm talking about TikTok hyped reads it would feel remiss for me not to mention a certain someone and I read three of this certain someone's books this year because I did a reading vlog for her specifically and I will link that down below. But I do plan on doing like another one in the future next year because I have more of her books to read. I just, I have read this author before and I really flip flop on whether I enjoy her books or I don't. Like there's really no in between. And that author, if you haven't guessed already, is Colleen Hoover. So. Colleen Hoover has taken TikTok by storm. Obviously we all know it and a lot of people are sick of hearing for her, but like good for her, honestly. She's killing it. She's introducing a lot of people to reading. I think that's incredible. So I read three of her books. I've already read Ugly Love and maybe Someday and I think Hopeless. I think I've read another one, Slammed maybe. I don't know. I've read some of her stuff. These are the three most recent ones I have read. And it had been a really long time since I had read anything by her. So I decided I decided to go with two of like the most hyped up ones. Obviously it ends with us, I would say is the most hyped and Verity. I think like either this or Reminders of Him, but like Reminders of Him is newer. So that's why, you know, I don't know. But if you're gonna rank them, I would say that these two are near the top. And then Confess was kind of just thrown in there. Confess I didn't really like. <laughs> so Confess wasn't a big fan of, um, yeah. I just, this was kind of for like a forgettable one for me. I feel like the one thing about Colleen Hoover, her books read incredibly quickly. They follow a formula and it works. Like I'm not complaining. They are such quick reads. This one though, it just was so corny in so many ways that I just, I did not like it. It had art in it, so I thought that was cool, but 
that was like the one redeeming thing. It Ends With Us was interesting because it's different than any other book that I have read in that genre and I felt like it dealt with the subject matter delicately and the author's note at the end also added a lot to that. I didn't realize that it was going to be about, like it's about abuse, I did not realize that at all and it was very, like, it was very fascinating. It was really eye-opening. It Starts With Us came out at the end of this year, and I haven't read it yet, but probably will do a reading vlog for that one in the new year. So I'm not sure if I, like, I think I liked it. I really kind of flip-flop on my feelings on this one in particular. Now, Verity blew my mind. I really liked Verity. I was listening to the audiobook, and I was like, what is happening at, like, so many points? This one, totally out of my realm and, and I mean I haven't read like a Colleen Hoover book that is a mystery before so out of my realm for her but also out of my realm in general. I don't really read many thrillers or mysteries but like oh my god this one was wild and I really liked it and I felt like I feel like sometimes Colleen Hoover's writing can be a bit corny which is to be expected like they're romance stories but I felt like in this one there wasn't that element of it and it was really enjoyable like I, I didn't really miss that because I think sometimes she can lean too cor corny for my personal taste but this one super cool. I don't think cool is actually the right word. Uh, thought provoking maybe. Or unsettling is another word for it. Next is Iron Widow by Zyran J. Zhao. I had heard a ton about this book. Uh, I had heard about it like before but then especially after I started working at Penguin Random House Canada because I mean we published this book so since it became like a TikTok sensation everyone was talking about it and everything and I finally read it at the end of the year and I get it like I really do it was so cool like a feminist fantasy story with a main character and like a main relationship too that is really just wild, the world was super cool. I did kind of like, it's very out there, like I had never read anything where it had this magic system that it has, where it's like these creature things. I kind of had trouble picturing all of it, but I think that's my own fault and not the authors. I think that they did a fantastic job with this story. Like the writing was incredible and I really loved it. Actually, that made me think of another book that I definitely read because of TikTok hype and I need to go and grab. I haven't actually filmed like my best books of the year video yet because it's currently like November 28th. So I haven't finished reading yet for the year. So I don't know, you may have heard about some of these books before already and one I'm sure you've heard about before is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan because I loved this book. It is an adult fantasy about the Daughter of the Moon Goddess obviously and she ends up in like a really dangerous position and is trying to save her mother and everything. It's just it's really good. I understand the hype for this one as well. The writing is beautiful and it is such a cool interesting fantasy world and like it just, yeah, it was really definitely so good. Really definitely so good. What what a sentence that was. Next is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This for sure is a book that I never would have read. And another one that actually came up in that most hyped books of 2021 video that I did. So that kind of made me interested in it. And I ended up picking it up. And I think I hauled it in my Christmas book haul, the one that I always do on Christmas Day. And I read it pretty early in 2022 and it was not at all what I expected. I kind of went into it blind, which is how I like to go into most books, but obviously I can't always do that because like when I'm talking about books in a video, I need to tell you what it's about or else why are you gonna be watching? But for this one, I was able to actually go into it not knowing a lot. I knew that it was set in this library between life and death and that was where you like existed, but I didn't know the intricacies of the story and I didn't know the self-help aspect of it. I think that this is a book that's definitely kind of polarizing. Some people don't like it, but for me, it meant a lot to me. It was definitely a book that like, I could see myself in and I mean you know if you've been watching my channel these past few years have not been the easiest for me mental health wise and I felt like this story was one that I read when I needed it and it just like stays close to my heart. I think it was such a beautiful book and I appreciated the self-help aspects being mixed within this really good story at the same time. Like 
I just thought this was really well done. Didn't expect it at all, but really loved it. Of course, The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood has also been so hyped up on TikTok, and I liked this one. Once again, didn't blow my mind, but I do understand why this one is more hyped up because it is kind of different for the adult romance genre in the fact that it deals with women in STEM at the forefront of it. And that has kind of become like Ali Hazelwood's thing. Also having like really huge men. I don't know why all the men are described as so big and that's definitely like what happens in this book. But I loved the fact that I was dealing with women in STEM, the fake relationship. There were a lot of like steamy moments that I was like, ooh, like this is quite good. I was enjoying it. And I did like the relationship. Um, I don't know what kind of missed the mark for me here. I think maybe I found the story to be a little bit slow and maybe I found the believability of the fake dating premise, it was a bit weak for my taste. Like it's a PhD candidate who ends up fake dating one of the professors there. That sounds weird, but like PhD candidate, like it's not weird, the age gap, it's not weird. <laughs> she's doing it because her friend, like her best friend, she thinks that she's not dating the guy that she likes because she had gone out on a date with him. So she's trying to say, oh, I have moved on. But I felt like the whole, that whole thing kind of seemed a little bit weak for me. But overall, like the story was really fun. Next is a book that I for sure would never have picked up if not for TikTok. And that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. And this is translated by, I don't know, it said somewhere, Jeffrey Tressel Live. So this was originally written in Japanese and it is Tales from the Cafe. It is a series now. Now, I have the second one and I'm definitely planning on reading it this winter because it is the perfect like cozy it's snowing outside you want to have like a cup of hot chocolate and just sit there and snuggle and read a book and you will like finish it probably because I did I finished this one in one sitting it is I think three or four stories four stories the lovers husband and wife the sisters and mother and child and it's essentially this cafe where you can travel through time and you're following the different stories of like all four of those characters and they're individual stories but the cafe is what connects them it's so hard to describe but like it's one that i think you should just go into and you will probably be like really pleasantly surprised i was speaking of a book that i absolutely never would have read without tiktok my year of rest and relaxation by otessa moshfe for sure never would have picked this one up it's just like it's not my thing this book does not look like anything that I would usually read. And I don't know how to describe that because I feel like I kind of will read anything or at least most things. But when I look at a book, I know, I know from the package, I judge the book by its cover. I always do that to see if it's gonna be something that I'm gonna wanna read. And this one, I was like, no, because it looks very intellectual. I think that's why this one just didn't seem like it was for me. But I was actually like, really pleasantly surprised by this one. And it's one, once again, I don't know if I liked it or not, because I feel like it's a hard book to say that you liked. This is supposed to be like the ultimate sad girl TikTok, like aesthetic book. And I can see why. It's about a woman who is trying to sleep for a year. So she's taking like all of these drugs and everything to try and sleep for a year straight. And it was just so confusing. Like I read this book really quickly because I became very engrossed in the character's mind, which I don't think is necessarily a good thing, but I was fascinated by everything that was happening, what she was doing, and I just like, I wanted answers. It was kind of like a morbid fascination that kept me going with this one and ended with me reading it like on a Saturday morning and then putting it down and I was like, whoa. And I felt like really sleepy afterwards, I'm not gonna lie. I felt like this character just like was in my mind and I didn't want that. I forget what I did after, but I must have done something like pure. <laughs> so I'm just editing this, but I actually remembered what I did immediately after finishing this book and it was have a nap. Yeah, like legitimately I had a nap and it was great. Cause this just felt like a dirty read. I don't know how to describe it, but really interesting hyped book. Uh, 
and yeah, I, I still don't really know how I feel about it. Next is Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. You guys know by now, loved this book. It is set in cottage country, Canada, and it is a childhood friends to lovers romance, and it is just adorable. Like, I had a great time with this one. Once again, I'm sure that this is one that I have talked about quite a bit already for Bookmas, so I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. Next is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. So this isn't one that like I think I wouldn't have read, but it is one that I think I read sooner because I was seeing it kind of around TikTok and Instagram and stuff, and I was really excited because I have read stuff by this author before. She has written quite a few YA novels, but this is her first adult novel, and I was really excited to see it everywhere, you know? And I really enjoyed this one. It's dealing with a main character who is a ghost writer, so that was really interesting, but she also can see ghosts. She like grew up in a funeral parlor that her family has owned, and her father has actually just died, so she ends up traveling home for the first time in ages to obviously like for his funeral, but then there's a ghost there that she wasn't expecting. It's a really good story. It's kind of like this forbidden romance sort of thing, but it manages to be really cute, also sometimes steamy, and then also like a will they won't they slow burn sort of thing, but also kind of fun at times, but also there's like the development of the main character, so it's kind of deeper. It's like, it hits all the levels for me. Next is The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. So this has been, I guess, really hyped up, but I haven't seen it anywhere except for like on lists of very hyped up books, but I feel like everyone, you know, everyone sees something different on TikTok, so it's hard to say specifically what is very hyped up, if that makes sense. But this is a friends to lovers romance, a best friends to lovers romance. They have been best friends for like six years and she is a ballerina who had an accident. So now she just actually owns a dance studio, but she's like really passionate about that. And her best friend is actually a pro NFL player. And they have a relationship that like, it, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, you know, like you're not just friends. No one, no one acts like that with their friends. Maybe they do, but most people don't. Like, you know there's the chemistry there and I'm a sucker for friends to lovers, really love it. And I like, I kind of understand why because it is like a really cute, dynamic that they have and it ends up being kind of like a friends to lovers but also fake dating thing. The characters are really fun. I think this would be a good book if you're like just breaking out of YA and trying to get into adult romance because it's steamy but not like there's no like explicit on page steam. It's just kind of like thoughts if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. I think that might make it sound worse but it's definitely like PG-13, I would say. I kind of hesitate to give it a rating, but it's not like explicit, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I think it was a solid friends to lovers. Was I blown away? No, but I will read more by the author. And the final book that I read because of TikTok, but also this one was definitely one that was hyped kind of like everywhere else. I mean, I feel like you can say that of all of these, but specifically this one, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. So Gabrielle Zevin is the author of uh, Storied Life of AJ Fickery. I definitely mentioned this one in the hyped books video because it was absolutely everywhere. It was hyped up at work. It was hyped up on Instagram. I was just kind of seeing it absolutely everywhere. And I feel like that hype did kind of hurt me a little bit. I don't like, I liked this one. I liked the fact that it was a story that was focusing on friendship. And I liked the fact that it was dealing with like video games and you're following these really interesting characters through like years of their relationship and everything and as they're growing up and all of that. But there was just something and I cannot pinpoint what it was that didn't hit the nail on the head for me. And I think part of that was because it was so hyped up. Like, I think that is kind of where I was let down because everyone was loving it. I felt like, oh, I'm probably gonna love it too. And usually if a book is super hyped up, if I haven't read it before the hype, I do try and like let it die down a little bit, but sometimes I get sucked in, you know, and I wanna know, I'm like, why is everyone so obsessed with this book? And yeah, I did wanna know. I wanted to read this one because everyone was talking about it. And for once I wanted to be like in on the conversation and not late to the conversation. But I think that may have been to my detriment a little bit. But oh well, like I, I liked this one, okay? I'm not saying it was a bad book. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it, but 
I wish I had gone, gone into it with like lower expectations. Okay, so those are all of the books that I read this year because of TikTok. And I'm sure next year there will probably be many more. I think TikTok is such a fascinating place to get like recommendations. And I do love kind of like following the crowd sometimes and seeing what everyone is interested in and wanting to read. I also absolutely said that today was Bookmas Day 19, but it's actually Bookmas Day 18 at the beginning of this video. So I apologize, just pretend that I said 18. But tomorrow for actual Bookmas Day 19, I'm going to be doing a Christmas romance reading vlog. So just reading some of the many Christmas romances that I have picked up this year. So you can like stay tuned for that tomorrow. Why am I struggling so much with these Bookmas outros? Uh, yeah, just thank you for watching and I will see you in a new video tomorrow. Bye!